What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, January 15th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the busiest lady in the business, Andrea Renee. What's good, Greg? What's good with you, Andrea? I heard you have a cool umbrella. I that do. was the scuttlebutt <laughs> Kevin had for Andrea. The, it's raining here in San Francisco. We were just talking as Midwestern uh, boys and girls. No one knows how to drive out here in the rain. True. So it took you a little bit longer. Kevin saw you walking up and he's like, I, I think it's Andrea. She has a cool umbrella. <laughs> Tell me about this umbrella. It is one of those umbrellas that is kind of uh, bubble shaped at the top, so it's really close. It doesn't have like the wide. Oh, it's like like, this, like, the, it's like, like if a, you're gonna, like in the get smart when you would talk it into the. You remember get smart? Anybody? No. Yeah, yeah. Really? Oh shit! Okay, not the not Thank the. Thank like, you, Kevin. Yeah, not the Steve Carell movie. Just black is fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The old. No, she'll no, take okay. it black, Kevin. Yeah, my dad. It, had this is me, my uh, penance for arriving a few minutes late. So I no, no, underestimated no. traffic, and so I arrived um, a few minutes late. Um, for the show today, and but I made it. But yes, the umbrella was necessary. You also and woke up and did the doc today. So I hey, did, cheers yes. to you. You can be as late as you want. If you're oh, gonna do thank that off you. My shoulders. I actually got to do some emails today. I was like, ooh, wee, look at me go. See, this is what teammate, teammates are all about. Yeah. Help each other. Wonder Twin powers activate. Exactly. Form of Kind of Funny <laughs> Games Daily. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you want to be part of the show and you like that, why not go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, where every bronze member gets to ask us any old question under the sun. Then tune in live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. See if we read your question. Enjoy the community on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Of course, if you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and listening on podcast services around the globe. Housekeeping for you. Uh, I will be gone Thursday and Friday. Why? Because I'm winging my way to New York City, Kevin. The Big Apple. To host the Star Trek Discovery Season 2 Red Carpet Premiere on Thursday night, you can tune into Facebook.com slash Star Trek CBS at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 4 p.m. Pacific to watch me uh, chat it up with the stars of Star Trek Discovery Season 2 as they launch Season 2 of it. Uh, then you can watch Star Trek Discovery on Thursday, January 17th at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, exclusively on CBS All Access, and see what that Michael Burnham's up to this season. Because she's going to be into some shenanigans, everybody, seeing what these aliens are after and what they're doing out there. I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to watch everything to get completely briefed on season one. I'm so proud of you, Greg. This is a really cool opportunity. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a cool way for me to stretch my wings and do something different, or like something I haven't done in a long time, I guess. Well, I've never done a red carpet, so it's just cool in general. You've never done a carpet? No, no. They usually like, get this bum off here, and I'm like, nah, and I'm eating out of the trash. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like Templeton the rat, my man. I love the excitement of yeah. a red carpet. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much fun. It's something that I miss about what I'm, what, how I'm hosting now is um, the style of hosting on a carpet is very different than what we do. Sure. Yeah. You're going to crush it. Thank you. Very excited. Everybody can tune in to watch that. Then you can tune in Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific to Twitch. Wait. We're promoting Andy's Andy's Twitch is what we're promoting. We, we have to. We're promoting it. All right. Tune into Andy's Twitch. Twitch.tv oh slash Andy Cortez at 4 p.m. Pacific on Saturday to watch at Maximum Cortez play at Aftercharge with the community. If you want to play, you should join Andy's Discord server. You can find it on his Twitter at Maximum How much did he pay us to promote his own Discord and his own Twitch channel? Uh, is this he, how he's he leaving? Has, like, he has, uh, Are no, you and Andy no. about to do to kind of funny what kind of funny to die Jen? Is that what you're fucking doing over there, Barrett? I mean, I, I don't want to say anything. Uh, once you're on his Discord uh, server, type hashtag after charge in the chat during Kind of Funny Games Daily this week for a chance to win a code on Xbox to play with him. And then today we're brought to you by Skillshare, but I'll tell you about that later. For now. Let's begin the what? Wait, wait! I'm so so good. I'm still getting the rhythm, Bear. You're so close. I'm Greg. still getting the rhythm of 4.0. Uh, <laughs> let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news, man. Bear is fucking angry over that. That's an angry one. Uh, three <laughs> items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Uh, this is also the legal report. Everybody's just suing everybody. Uh, number one, the mom of Fortnite super fan orange shirt kid is suing Epic Games over the use of his dance moves. This is from. 
Brian Crescente at Variety. It reads, The mother of the young boy affectionately known as Orange Shirt Kid, whose awkward Orange Justice dance won over so many Fortnite players that they won over so many Fortnite players that they convinced Epic Games to put it into the game, is now suing the studio over its inclusion. While this is just the latest in a strong in a string of plaintiffs going after Epic Games for the inclusion of their dance moves in Fortnite, what makes this particular case odd is that the Orange Shirt Kid submitted the dance to Epic Games Boogie Down Contest to have the dance included in the game. When he didn't make the cut, uh, a mass of players took to change.org to petition Epic to include him in the game. Eventually, much to the delight to the much to the delight of the kid himself, they got their way. In the rules of the contest, Epic spells out that players won't be paid for the use of selected dance moves and also notes that it has the rights to use the dance for publicity of the game. The dance was also never sold, but instead given away as part of a free battle pass. So it had to be unlocked by playing, but not through a purchase. In the lawsuit filed last week, there is no mention of the Boogie Down contest. Shocking. I know. <laughs> Nor of the tweets now deleted from Orange Shirt Kid in which he submits his dance moves or celebrates Epic Epic's pop uh, post contest decision to add him to the game. Instead, the child's mother, Rachel McCumbers, says the orange shirt kid exploded in popularity in or around early 2018 after he made a video of himself performing the random and the accompanying catchphrase. Uh, after the dance, which the lawsuit says is called the random, gained popularity, Fortnite players started a campaign to encourage Epic Games to incorporate the random in Fortnite, according to the suit. It also notes that the child was the victim of extreme cyberbullying and that he was forced to deactivate both his Instagram and YouTube accounts. The suit also notes that now, when people perform the dance, they don't call it the random, but rather refer to it by the name used in Fortnite, Orange Justice. McCumbers is seeking unspecified damages. Pierce, Bainbridge, Beck, Price, and LLP, <laughs> which filed the lawsuit, is also the law firms behind the complaints for Epic Games is uh, by or other Epic Games complaints by Brooklyn ra- rapper Two Millie, actor Alfonso Ribeiro, and Instagram star Backpack Kid over the use of their dance moves in the game. Everybody suing everybody, Andrea. Oh, Fortnite's real successful. Let's go after it. This is... And I'm generalizing. I know there is uh, IP involved with some of it, but go ahead. Yeah, it's becoming irritating is what I was going to say. Does, do you think Orange Shirt Kid has a case here? Hell no. It seems like... I, okay, Alfonso. Okay. Sure. I got it. Two million. All right. You're making some interesting points here about IP and dance moves and all this stuff. Fucking, you submitted it in a contest. <laughs> I, I have to imagine this is why the legalese in the contest rules are there to say that once you submit this, it's no longer yours. Thank you for trying. Right. The idea that his legal team actually thinks that he has a chance is really the argument I would love to hear. Like yeah. how his lawyers actually think that they are going to win something for him after he volunteered it. I mean, there was a, a change.org petition about this. Like, I just... I don't I, understand I would imagine why. that's the way they're going to try to get around it is that he didn't win the contest. So the contest rules wouldn't apply to him. But I'm right. sure I'm sure it says in there if you even submit to the contest, you're saying you can do this. Not like out of all the cases we've read about on kind of funny games daily about people suing Epic and Fortnite. This seems to be the flimsiest because, yes, it's like you gone in and you deleted the tweets where you submitted, where you were happy about it. I, I, we talked about this when I think we were talking about the Alfonso lawsuit that like TMZ caught up to orange shirt kid. Maybe they were talking about backpack kid. I can't keep it all these probably kids straight. Backpack kid. They were talking all sorts of kids out there about what's going on. And they were like, oh yeah, they were happy. But then the parents are getting involved. And like you're, if I'm reading between the lines here, he got Pierce, he got Bainbridge, he got Beck, he got Price, and you got Hecht. All L- all part of an LLP, right? They're the ones behind Two Millie, Alfonso, and Backpack Kid. You assume they're getting Orange Shirt Kid involved with, they're, they're, we're going to class action, it's going to be a settlement, they're not going to go for all of this. Like, sure, you have the weakest of the cases, but get on the boat. We're going right. right now. We're going racing. Come on. They definitely have an exploratory committee that's <laughs> I- intentionally seeking these kids out or these performers out to try to make a stronger overall case. Sure. 100% that's happening. Um, it's just... <laughs> sure. I guess when you have all the money, everybody wants some of it. Yeah. Where do you come down on the other ones, though? Do you? I mean, when we talk about Alfonso Ribeiro or Backpack Kid or Two Millie. Well, when and, I'm, and I'm most familiar with Alfonso, of course. Right. When we've spoken about this in the past, my 
thought is it's not going to really hurt Epic if they make a settlement and give these guys some of the profits for the emotes that are specifically sold in microtransactions. Now, if they're part of the free battle pass or something that you can earn in game, it gets a lot stickier. Like, so how do you, how do you quantify that from a dollar perspective into what they are supposed to be getting or what their fair share is? That's where it gets tough and that's why this one law firm is probably representing all of these people because they're going to try to get the same settlement deals i would guess for everybody yeah you think so right just coming in with one but giant. if i'm two milli i don't give a fuck about backpack kid no, or we're sure kicking the kid, fuck out of here you know because he created that dance and not to say that these kids didn't either but sure. i think they're not apples and oranges agreed but i think that's how they're going to try to put them all together right one yeah. bushel of yeah. vegetables and fruits over there to try to get all the money if That's you want. That's generally the way, you know, uh, legal decisions are made. They, they don't have shades of gray. I have it on good authority that shirtless Spider-Man's thinking about suing Fortnite for not being included. Well, you know what I mean. So that's, that's just a like, story that we should do definitely it. put I, in the I mean, I, I, If do Shirley do Spider-Man it. doesn't, he's a coward. Maybe he's he'll be the next coward. to reach out to Pierce Brainbridge, <laughs> Beck Price, and Hacked. It's like at some point, two of you just leave. All right, two of you just start <laughs> your own two thing. Two more join. I'm just saying. Or when do you Score, abbreviate it to like a PBB? Why doesn't PH? anybody say, well, you know what? Is there an, the Avengers of law? Is there like, has <laughs> anybody it, done that? It. They should call themselves the Avengers of law. Oh yeah. <laughs> I digress. Uh, Jeff <laughs> Rinko wrote in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, I was surprised today to see that in the new Forza Horizon update, they are removing both the Carlton dance emote and the floss emote from the game. Do you think these specific emotes are going to be removed from more games in the near future? Or is it just playground games slash Microsoft trying to avoid being roped into legal trouble? I'm sure Microsoft is looking at everything happening with Epic and it's like, you know what? Not We're good. It. Not worth it. <laughs> I, think, I think you're going to see them start to go away from all the games. Like and not all the games, but I think the majority of games that have put them in are going to start phasing them out because this will be the story then, right? right? When whatever happens with Epic sets legal precedent or set out of court settlement precedent, it's then going to be like on. I'm not even trying to throw anybody uh, any dot com out there who wants to. Sure. Here's the top ten other games that are using the Carlton emote, that's and that's been when done. fucking right yeah. through the wall, Pierce, Brainbridge, Beck, Price, and Hecht pop on out. The Avengers of Law. The <laughs> Avengers of Law <laughs> pop out of the wall, and they're like, you know what? Let's go after everybody. You're going down. Wow. And then everybody's like, ah, oh, fuck. Here we go. Andrea, mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I, don't, I told them. I don't think they changed it. We're going to put number three in here because it's another Fortnite story. Okay. This one comes from Twinfinite where Tom Meyer reports Fortnite 7.20 update brings back glider redeploys mechanic. Uh, Fortnite 7.2 update goes live later today and adds new items, quests, and features for both Battle Royale and Save the World modes. The biggest change in the update is the return of the glider redeploy feature in Battle Royale, wit but with a twist. The feature, added last October and disabled less than a month later, allowed players to redeploy their glider after falling from a certain height and safely travel to the ground anytime. Players were fine with the mechanic in casual modes like Soaring 50s and Team Rumble, but not in the default solo, duos, and squad modes. The glider is now an item that lets players redeploy their gliders by pressing the jump button in midair. The item takes up an inventory slot and can be found alongside loot sources and carries 10 charges. For large team modes, players will automatically have a glider item with 50 charges after dropping from the battle bus. We're already talking Fortnite. I felt like that was the best play. I was looking at my, my Fortnite subreddit on the plane ride home last night. Everybody was bitching about it because people love it. They hate it. They don't like it. it. It gets added. They're mad. It gets taken away. They're mad. It comes back with limits. They're mad. Sounds like the internet. It's just you know, trying to deal with the giant player base, right? Like, how do you keep everybody happy? You don't. I think it's cool because, and I'll tell you, I died a, a couple times. I died, a, not a couple times. I died once uh, over break where I was like, oh, I think I'm going to be able to redeploy from here. Jump just fell to my death. And it was the thing where I built out and I was, I, Jen was with me and I was like, all right. It's time to see how well I know this game. I think this works. It's just dead. And I was and I was like top 15 at that point. So Epic, look for a lawsuit from me soon where I, I will be represented by the Avengers of law and I will come and I want my victory royale bonus XP, whatever the fuck I would have gotten. I don't even know. Just give me that money. So that's happening. If you care, I like Fortnite. Barrett, do you still like Fortnite? Uh, I haven't gotten in the last couple of seasons just because after whatever season was going on during uh, when it came out on Switch, like, yeah. I felt like that was a good way to get in. And then every season after that has added just like way too much. Um, you I, like almost, I, I, I almost came back this season, but now I feel you like it's to. too late. Okay. Because how many weeks are we in at this point? We're deep. Yeah. We're like we're actually like mid tier because it's it's doing really good. I, I'm you, thinking of coming back next season, Greg. Yeah. You gonna pull me back in? No, next season will be too close to everything. 
Uh, Next right. it'll be divisions on the radar. Anthem's there. We got Resident right. Evil already. What? Yeah, we're playing some division. We big Cav dogs. Woo wee! Hell Woo-wee. yeah! And Fortnite's never done anything for you, right? No, battle royale. No. Um, if there wasn't yeah, so many other things to play, yeah, I would go back to save the world. But every time I boot up save the world, I feel like I spend an hour in my menus just looking at all of the stuff there is to look at yeah. and I haven't read any patch notes recently to as to how that they've changed or optimized it and I'm kind of daunted about going back in and having to deal with that because the inventory system in Save the World is just like Not mind-numbingly good. boring gotcha. and overwhelming at the same time. Yeah, Wayne. Yeah. Number three on the Roper Report. Get the Avengers of Law on the phone. Red Dead Redemption 2 publisher is suing over Pinkerton use. This is from Adam Bankhurst from IGN.com, a kind of funny best friend who will be joining us somewhat soon. I forget what day I booked him on, but he's coming through eventually. Take-Two Interactive, publisher of Red Dead Redemption 2, is in a legal battle with the security company Pinkerton over the use of characters Andrew Milton and Edgar Ross, two Pinkerton agents featured in Rockstar's latest title. As reported by The Verge, this all began with, or when, Pinkerton Consulting and Investigations sent Take-Two a cease and desist letter over the previously mentioned characters in December. Pinkerton appreciated Rockstar's clear affection, that's in quotes, for Pinkerton, but felt the developer was creating the f- hey, I'm, I'm his quotes again creating a false impression that the game was made by or connected with Pinkerton end quote how the fuck would anyone think that I digress which is it is not and it is demanding take to pay either a lump sum or ongoing royalties take two in response is suing Pinkerton in return <laughs> and claiming the characters are within the protection of the First Amendment and are requesting the characters to be declared fair use arguing they're part of Red Dead Redemption 2's detailed historical setting Take two further explains that the Pinkerton National Detective Agency appears in other Western fiction and the agency played a major role in the real 19th and early 20th century American history. As The Verge states, Pinkerton agents appear in such other media as Deadwood, The Long Riders, and Bioshock Infinite, where the main character, Booker DeWitt, was a former Pinkerton agent. The complaint accuses Pinkerton of trying to capitalize on the success of Red Dead Redemption 2, which has already sold over 17 million copies. This is hardly the first legal battle Take-Two has to partake in, and it also found itself in hot water when Lindsay Lohan filed a 67-page complaint that accused Grand Theft Auto V of using her likeness in the game for the character of Lacey Jonas without her consent. We all know how that turned out. Everybody get on the lawsuit train. Where are the Avengers of Law? <laughs> are they representing Pinkerton or are they representing Take Two? Wouldn't I don't the know. Would the Avengers of Law just be called the Justice League? How dare you, Barry? How dare you? All right. Get out. How dare you? Uh, Andrew, what's your take on this lawsuit? <laughs> People love to sue Rockstar. They really, do. I mean, Rockstar. People love to sue successful things. Correct. That's why Kind of Funny never been sued, never will be. And that's why Rockstar is, <laughs> wait, no. <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rockstar gets these lawsuits with every game they release because they are incredibly successful. That is absolutely true. The idea that they were so daft that they did not know that Pinkerton has this deep, historical presence yeah. not just in um video games but also in other media and also just like in life yeah. <laughs> it's like you can't you can you don't get to now i almost want someone to turn around and be like how did you why are you using the name pinkerton like where do where do you get off trying to have your agency be called pinkerton it's just dumb yeah do you think this one actually gets like, settled or do you think they'll fight fight? Because I, I like I, I the fair use thing makes a lot of sense to me personally. And, and that's just somebody with, I guess, a cursatory J105, whatever journalism law behind me. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Pinkerton Consulting and Investigations does not have the legal might that take Two interactive. Does. That's my thing. <laughs> and, and with Epic and stuff in Fortnite, I see them being like, all right, here's your check, whatever. Yeah. Take two, I see like, we will fucking fight you till the end of time on this. Well, the Lindsay Lohan thing went on yeah. for years. Well, they thought she would just die. <laughs> they thought, <laughs> take two is forever. Ouch. Lindsay Lohan, all of us, we're going to die. You know, this is like when I was future proof in the other episodes by saying people rest in peace. Barrett, rest in peace. He was God taken too soon. Barrett Courtney, this episode now future proof. When Barrett does die, whether it be untimely or whether it be he's you know a great grandfather you know what i mean now you play this episode you get to remember barrett courtney barrett can you flash up the graphic that says barrett courtney uh 19 god how young are you how you're young too right 95 Don't, no fucking way 95. yes 1995 yes Fuck he's 23 you. years Fuck old Greg. you god damn it Woo! i'm never gonna grow up 
<laughs> Do you remember 9-11? Yeah. <laughs> I remember being taken home. And like, like crazy airplanes were like flying, like the Air Force was like flying over Cleveland and stuff. Oh, yeah. You were yeah. six years old. Yeah. I was in college. I remember, right? yeah, I remember the TV, like every station was uh, Bush. Yeah. Sure, sure. Well, how, well, that's not, that's sad. Like, Let's not talk about it. I like how the Let's planes were over back. Cleveland. Yeah. Well, that was the next hot spot we were coming for. You oh, Barrett. I mean? Barrett, I can't wait to see when you die, <laughs> but it's going to happen. <laughs> it's probably going to happen so much <laughs> further out from right now. If I wanted some more immediate news, like say what came to the mom and grab shops today, Andrea, where would I go? You would go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday. <laughs> Yeah. Out today, Battlefield 5 begins 2019 with a blast of new content in Chapter 2, Lightning Strikes. Kicking off tomorrow is Squad Contest, Con Conquest, a tighter and more intense version of Conquest that enables more tactical gameplay between two teams of 16 players on the Arras, Rotterdam, and Hadamabs. Uh, a new grand Mata. operation called Battle of Hanut will deploy in Chapter 2. Set in the French and Belgian countryside, players will give it they're all in airborne break. There's a lot of battlefield stuff out. Yeah, I I just put this in there for context in case uh, you were interested no, in taking a, a look job. at it. But there's a new co-op experience, Combined Arms, which is also launching in February. Uh, that probably should be down in new dates, but it was part of the announcement about Chapter 2, which launched today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Man, Battlefield 5, there's a game nobody talks about. Except all of the millions of people who are playing it. They don't talk about it. <laughs> they don't ever talk about it. I never see you talking about it out there. Uh, my time at Portia is out on PC today. Porsche, Porsche. War what? Porsche. No, Portia. Okay. It's like Portillo, but it's Portia. <laughs> uh, Onimusha Warlords is on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Switch. Smoke and Sacrifice is on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. The Walking Dead, the final season, Episode 3, is on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch. Vane is on PlayStation 4. The Grand Tour Game is on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Holy Potatoes, War in <laughs> Space is on PlayStation 4. Barrett, can I please see a trailer for Holy Potatoes, We're in Space? And it's Holy Potatoes, exclamation, We're in Space? Question mark exclamation. And I'd love to know how easy the trophies are. Uh, Panda Hero, which came to PlayStation 4 yesterday, comes to PC today. Uh, As Divine Hearts 2 comes to PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Vita. It lives. Never Winter, The Heart of Fire is available on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One today. And then Assassin's Creed Odyssey has that episode 2 DLC out today as well. All right, so here we go. Holy potatoes, we're in space. Got some space spaceships. Surrender potato scum. It's actually, oh, we are potatoes. Okay. Never scrap What's face. the gameplay? Jump to the middle of the thing. I don't, I don't, I don't need their cinematics here, you know? I think it's all cinematic. What, really? There's got to be some it's gameplay on the book? internet somewhere, right? Yeah, what? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, so talking. it's oh, like... Here we go, here we go. Uh, well, that's just traveling. Mm, uh, mm, well, it kind of looks like FTL now. It, I mean, I'm not, it, hmm, it doesn't look like an easy platinum. That's all we cared about. <laughs> It does not look like an easy New one. dates for you. Bandai Namco Entertainment America Incorporated today announced that Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission will be available in the Americas on April 5th, 2019 for Switch PC. Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission is a tactical RPG card game. That will be the first Dragon Ball Heroes series game to be released outside of Japan. <laughs> City of Brass. The Arabian Nights inspired first person rogue light adventure from Bioshock veterans at Uppercut Games sets out for more cursed treasure on the Nintendo Switch on February 8th, 2019. <coughs> dying. Andrea, take I'm dying. A, take a minute and drink some water. I'll I, read the rest of them. I ate a eucalyptus <laughs> pill today and it burned off most of my mucus, but there's still mucus here. Oh my gosh. Ew, ew eucalyptus pill. The Dalek Entertainment and Spanish developer Tessera Studios will release Intruders Hide and Seek on February 13th for PlayStation VR. Um, I put a little bit more context in because I thought this game sounded interesting because I'd never heard of it. So Intruders Hide and Seek. In the game, three mysterious strangers break into a countryside vacation home and retain the Richter family as hostage. With your parents restrained and your sister hiding, you become Ben, the eldest son who's stuck in the house with the intruders. You will have to find a way to save your family while you figure out who the three assailants are and what they want. Did this, I, did I what? hear the Richter family? Like yes. Andy Richter? <clears throat> yeah. Correct. Okay, okay. So is Andy Richter in the game? I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't think that. It but it's a, it's a hostage VR PlayStation game. PlayStation VR hostage game. Weesh, I don't know. Every time I, walked unbreak, uh, every time I watched Unbreakable, I was never like, you know who I want to be? One of the people chained up to the radiator. I was like, <laughs> no, nah, I'd rather be Bruce Willis and slamming people. Well, around. you're not chained up. <laughs> you're trying to, to, to rescue your parents. You yeah, play the I oldest son. I don't know, man. They, your parents restrain and your sister hiding. You become Ben. 
I don't know. I mean, that's what kids like scary games. Maybe that's you're true. playing Andy Richter. <clears throat> Maybe this is the origin of Andy Richter. After this, he changes his name from Ben to Andy. Dynamite drop in Barrett. Fucking sit over there on the ones and twos. <laughs> Starlet on Wheels, the free to play kart racing game from the popular Starlet series, will arrive globally on Android and iOS smartphones on January 31st. I also got that press release and intentionally omitted it. I just, hey, I, I don't know a fucking potato from a tomato. You know what I'm saying? But hey, if you're going to say Starlet on Wheels in the popular Starlet series, I'm like, well. Oh. Balls on you. All right. You're saying you got a popular Starlet series. I don't know. I've never heard of it. <laughs> Deals of the day for you. Let's start with the official word. Or the, let's start and end with the official word from Nintendo. Starting on February 4th, three high quality Nintendo 3DS games starring iconic characters. Super Mario Maker for the Nintendo 3DS. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D and Star Fox 64 3D are joining the Nintendo Selects library. Nintendo Selects is a collection of games available at a suggested retail price of only $19.99 each. So there you go. That's February 4th, if you've been holding out. And I say again, where is Mario Maker for Switch? I would enjoy that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, reader mail. But first, it's brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you and your new year goals. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep, your learn keep you learning and thriving in 2019. Tim Geddes, that's right, the verified one, learned a ton about sound design and After Effects for Kind of Funny 4.0 videos and loves all the tutorials. Skillshare is also super affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare. The first 500 of my subscribers to use the link in the YouTube description will get a two-month free trial. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Go to youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Click on kfgd for today and then right there the first 500 people to use the link for skillshare get a two-month trial for free oh there's another out today that we missed <laughs> assassin's <laughs> creed odyssey legacy of the first blade episode two Ooh. now available i said that both of you i said that i said the assassin's creed i don't know greg it was the final it. new date i said i don't know greg it's wait it's not in out today's i know i added it late i wrote it in though see ac episode two I'm on it. I never forget my girl. Thank you, Andrea. Did Thank he you so say much. it, Barry? I did Thank say you so it. Much. I'll roll back the tapes, but I don't think you. I don't think you wrote it. Look at kind of funny. dot com slash. You're wrong. You're allowed to chime in. Because I also don't think you read that. Never winter. The heart of fire is now available on PS4 and Xbox One, despite the fact that it's I in did. the show notes. I said something funny before then, and you got distracted. I believe <laughs> Probably, Panda Hero. That might have Panda been Hero happened. threw you off. All right. It definitely threw me off. God damn, people I just don't even listen. <laughs> I'm gone for two. I missed like three shows and everybody forgets about it. <laughs> David Scott writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. It says, what's good, Greg and Andrew? Yesterday, a lead producer on Anthem stated that the game will have matchmaking for every activity in the game, something Destiny does not offer when it comes to raids. Do you think this is a good idea or possibly will end badly? I love the idea of matchmaking for everything, but it makes me worry about communication on big boss fights. Thanks for everything you guys do. David Scott. This is for you. This is right up your alley. This is coming right down. This is a meatball over the plate to Andrea Renee. She's 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 got the she's got the bat. What do you say when she swung the bat back and she's gonna swing it forward? Who's a baseball person? I don't. Th baseball people don't say that. I think just, this is they a, just take a swing. What's this called? All right. I think it's a good idea that they're getting ahead of that and answering these types of questions. Yeah. The key difference between Anthem and Destiny is that Anthem is a PVE only game. There is no competitive player versus player element to Anthem. They have not announced anything post-launch. When I spoke to the team at the Game Awards during the pre-briefing we had ahead of the new story trailer they released, they said there are no plans at this time to add PvP, that they're going to wait and see how their community reacts around the elements that are already built in, and if there's a big demand for it, and if it's part of the team's bandwidth, that they will okay. maybe address that sometime in the distant future. So I think that's a bit that's the big thing is that, you know, with matchmaking, um the bigger thing in regards to making sure that only some things are public matchmaking and others are private, right? You would set up your own fire team for example. Yeah. So I got very distracted by what's happening with the music. They're making sure um, in review will run fine after this. Is, they don't give a shit about this show anymore. We don't know how strongholds are going to be compared to the raids in Destiny. The, the reason why there isn't public matchmaking, I mean, obviously there's guided games now, but that's like a whole other ball of wax I'm not going to get into for a second, is that 
um, the raids require really precise communication and teamwork, and that's really difficult to achieve in public matchmaking, particularly if people refuse to get on comms, right? If people sure. don't go into the team voice channel, um, it can be impossible so to I, accomplish. I want to stop you for one second, because I feel, I, you know, that I dabble in these multiplayer games, yes. right? But I do only play with you or best friends or whoever. Uh, why are people like against this? Is it the idea that like what you're, like, you're going to be forced in with strangers or like, I don't understand. I, I, I saw this go by and I was like, oh, that's cool. I never, th- but like people are like not angry about it, but there's like actually a lot of scuttlebutt about it. Why would I be against public matchmaking? I don't know. Okay, I, I, okay. I guess. Okay. The, the first thing that would come to my mind is you would be against public, public matchmaking because of the opportunity for griefing. We okay. don't, know how griefing will present itself in anthem because we haven't played it yet but i would hope that people don't grief and i don't know how you would grief in a pve game maybe harassment is the one thing that maybe people are concerned about sure i think about a game like fallout 76 and how i play played by myself in that game and it was annoying to have people like in and around me when I'm trying to just adventure by myself right? in some of the areas where you use crafting benches, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, I don't know what, what's to be upset about. Well, this is, like like David, David, you know, do you think it'll be a good idea or will it possibly end badly? I was just like, I don't understand how it could end badly other than, yeah, I guess like I'm joining up in a public thing and then I'm getting put with bad people. But like, why yeah. well, can I just boot them? Go. Wouldn't that just drive me to have a, join a, a clan or hang out with my friends or? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I mean, I guess if we're going to like hypothesize about how it could go bad, let's say you're in a stronghold and you're doing public matchmaking and the stronghold is scaled for four players because there is scaling in yeah, that yeah. game. And then two of those players drop out because they're like, oh, I'm bored or oh, I have to go or whatever. Now the instance has been scaled for four players, but there's only two of you left. Left, mm-hmm. it and doesn't it's correct substantial. Yeah, I have no idea, okay. right? I would imagine that it would c- correct itself eventually, but it's not immediate. Because I, if I think about a game like Destiny, if I'm going into a strike with three people and then one or two people drop out and I'm yeah. in there by myself, it can get much more difficult depending on my level and which strike I'm doing, what the modifiers are, et cetera. Et cetera. Not only that, I mean, like you'd be on, they'd be on your shit list. Well, yeah, but if it's public matchmaking, I'll never see them again. Sure, but I mean, like, when I raided with you and you, like, laid on a lie, like, everybody has to finish this raid. We're not I'm like, oh, my God. I, I'm usually Listen, scared of Andrew. You, I'm super scared of Andrew. If you commit to raiding, don't bitch out halfway through the raid, is what I'm saying. <laughs> you got a point. You're not wrong. I, I'm right? not saying Like, yeah, yeah. you don't come to the raid and go, ooh, he's a good go after the first room. Sure. Okay. Well, don't do that, Greg okay. Miller. I won't do that. I won't do that. Don't Andrew, do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay. Also, everybody in the chat is with me that I did say Odyssey and I did say that other game. But Cam- no, and you're wrong. Cameron they, Abbott says they it said best. You missed Odyssey. Cameron Abbott says it best. Best. Greg said both games and dates. <laughs> Andrea Barrett, come at the king. You best not miss. Right there. Tyler Where's Drummond. The proof, Greg dude? definitely said Assassin's Creed DLC. Where's uh, the proof? Go. You're literally listening to it. <laughs> no, these are people who are just vouching for you, man. You can I you leave the room and evidence. rewind the Twitch thing. Can you do that? I don't know. I don't think so. While we're live, I don't know how to use Twitch. <laughs> I'm going to go with another Andrew-related question. Sure. Andrew Dramas wrote in to Kind of Fun. Nope, patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. You'll get it, it, Greg. Don't worry. And he said, what's good, Greg and Andrew? My question is for Andrew. I'm a lapsed Destiny 2 player, and I haven't touched the game since Curse of Osiris. I've been a huge Destiny fan all the way from the first Destiny 1 beta, but I was never a super hardcore player. So much so that I've never, I never even did the first raid in Destiny 2 <gasps> because I either never had enough people with me or enough time. The Destiny 2 discussion you and Fran had on the most recent games cast really made me want to dive back in, though. My question is, should I get back into Destiny 2, parentheses, with the help of the squad up or KFGD or the What's Good Guardians, now that there is so much content to catch up on, or should I just bide my time and wait for Anthem? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for all you do. Andrew. Of course you should get back into Destiny. Destiny is the best it's ever been. They have lots of ways for new Guardians to level up quickly, to um, be able to join in some of the new content that came out with Season of the Forge. Um, Obviously, Forsaken is a fantastic new installment that just came out in September. There's lots of ways to get into Destiny right now. I highly recommend it. There's a ton of active Guardians, both in the Kind of Funny clans and in the What's Good Guardians uh, clans we have a a couple of different clans depending on which platform you're playing on so yes 
I would say, obviously, Anthem's going to be great, but they are just very different gameplay styles. I mean, one is first person, one is third person, one has PvP, one doesn't. Um, one has more of a story and narrative focus. The other has more of a cooperative PvE focus. It's they're, they're different games. Do they have some similarities? Yes, but, I mean, play both if you can, if you have the bandwidth. You certainly have you got a time full, right now, you right? Have a full yeah. four weeks until Anthem comes out. So, yeah. Do it, Andrew. Now, do you feel like a hypocrite? Because you're saying all this, and you could say the same for Fortnite, save the world, and you're wrong. Max7695 <laughs> says, Fortnite, save the world menus have been redesigned, and they have made other changes, so inventory management is easier to manage. That's great to hear. You really should give another shot. Smiley emoji. Okay. You gave it a lot of time. I you did. You played a lot of it. I did, and I kind of want to give my time now back to Rainbow Six. I've gotten back in. Really? Yeah. You keep you relapse on that game a lot. I did. I, Once well, a I year. Mean, Once a year, I feel well, like you fall back into it. That's what you do with games and services, though, true, right? And true. that's how you have to maintain. There's so many of them now. We get that question quite a bit on this show. Like, how are we going to maintain player bases for so many different games and services? And it's like, well, you spend some time in one. You take a break. Spend some time in another. Take yeah. a break. Got to rotate. You got to. Right now, I'm just waiting. Though. Division two on the horizon. But you have to wait until March for that. I'm going to be hungry. It's going to be good. I'm going to be ready for it. You know what I mean? Are you just going to play Fortnite until March? Oh, no, no, no. Resident Evil 2. I'm going to try Anthem. You know, there's a chance. I mean, Destiny 2 caught me off guard. I really like that. Yeah. Everybody who says that, when I talk about Anthem, I'm like, eh, it doesn't look like a world I want to be involved in. Everybody's like, I've played it. I'm like, well, there you go. I haven't played it. I haven't touched sticks on it yet. And everybody who plays it says it's amazing. You feel like Iron Man and it's great. And I'm like, I like Iron Man a lot. So we'll see. Maybe I get in there. Maybe you, you know, you're going to be in there. You're going to be playing. You show me the ropes. Maybe something happens. It's going to be so good, Greg. Okay. It's going to be so good. I'm so ready. And that's the thing too, is like, I felt like I, I was talking about this yesterday. You kind of referenced it with the Star Trek stuff. I'm enjoying the show so much that I'm thinking about play, starting Andromeda when I get back from the premiere or like restarting <gasps> it, like delete my save oh, and go back Greg, in. That makes Don't me so do happy. Do it. Oh, I please liked, do it. I liked Andromeda where it was going. I played it launch. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it was rough. And then I heard it all got fixed. Like, why not try it? You know what I mean? And there's a new <clears throat> um, enhanced for Xbox One X patch that they put out about a month ago. Looks real good. I'm just saying. Yeah, I started well, it over on Xbox. How so. the trophies, though? You know what I mean? Come on. I'm not going to go play on Xbox. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Give me them trophies. Yeah. I like Barry. I'm glad we hired him. Uh, Dapper Steven with a PH writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like you can with a question. It says, will there be a New York meetup? Hey, Greg and Andrea. Just like how I was shocked when you announced you were going to Chicago around Thanksgiving since I was going to be in the area, I was shocked that you'll be going to New York this week because I will be flying to New York this Thursday until Sunday. Will there be a New York meetup since you will be there hosting the Star Trek premiere? It was awesome meeting you two in Chicago. You two are the best. Thanks for all you do. Dapper Steven with a PH. Dapper Steven with a PH. No. I'm coming in on like basically the red eye. Then I'm working on the thing Thursday. Then I'm doing stuff on Friday I can't talk about yet that I've pulled strings to make happen. And then, no, I'm right back to San Francisco. So no time for it. But of course, remember, because of your support on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, that's right, we're fundraising all the month of January to support Kind of Funny's future and fund a world tour. We are going to New York City to do a meet and greet. I forget if we've announced a date on that. Do you, you know, Barry? I don't think we have. You've not only even a announced the date for the Arizona meet and okay. greet, which is January 26th. Cool. Yeah. Wait, 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 do we move that though? I think we want to move that too, right? Oh, you moved it? Did we? The Arizona Is Joey meet here? Joey. Joey! She's right here. You should probably tell people if you moved it because that's coming up quick. Hey, I got a fucking slot. I mean, it's like I think we moved it. What, where are we at with the Arizona meet and greet? Do we have the f official date locked in? We have the official date locked in, but then I slacked you all that stuff about having. So are we, do are we doing that or not? We have to circle back. I'm checking with the location. It's going to be that weekend. Yeah. For sure. And then do we have a month for New York or no? We have a month for New York. It's April. April. So we we'll should have all of this announced and locked down this week. Sure. Yeah, 4.0 is come on hard. You know what I mean? There's yeah, a lot there's of things happening. Don't worry about it. Okay, <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Why are your shoes that sticky? It's wet outside. And that makes shoes sticky? Yeah, dude. Makes them squeak huh. on the floor. I only wear Converse. I don't know. Fucking science, man. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> you got to get a more absorbent rug at the front door. No, you just got to spend a little bit more time getting dry. Sent the Prophet <laughs> has the final question of the day at patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, what's up, KFGD crew? Thank you for making my day a little brighter. With the rise of gaming streaming services like Game Pass, do you see a shift to episodic games and release date schedules akin to Life is Strange or the recent Hitman 1? Similar to Netflix originals, should, could you see a similar style of content coming to Xbox and Sony to keep subscribers engaged month by month? That's a great idea, Prophet. I don't think we'll see that, but I think it's worth them considering. Well, it's 
weird, right? Because especially like with the Star Trek thing of watching, I'm watching it and I'm enjoying it. And it's like, oh, this is great. I'm just binge watching, right? And I was like, wait, this isn't how it came out, though, right? And I was talking to somebody like, no, 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 it was it was week by week. And I'm like, oh, that feels weird. You know what I mean? I, I, I like it so much more now where I'm just ripping through it as I want to download them on my phone, watch it on a plane or whatever. Games, of course, well, if I'm like, oh, man, I wish episodic games all dropped at once. It'd be like, well, that's just the game, right? Like, I feel like that's how it is. And also, do you feel like episodic games are falling away? Like, I feel like we went through that time. Where, and granted, it was because of Telltale where it was oh, mm-hmm. everything. But even now, with like Life is Strange, where I feel like there was a couple weeks ago where I was like, man, I really want episode two. And like episode two's on the horizon now, right? But it's right. like, oh, no, it's getting complicated. When am I going to actually have time to play it? Yada, yada, yada. Like, I don't, it, it, I feel like they had their time and they shine and they were doing so well. And now you don't see as many people trying it. But again, I guess it's just because Telltale's moved away from it because they're dead. Well, well Hitman he, also uh, moved away from it. Too, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took the words right out of my mouth, Whoa, Barrett. Andrea, we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> uh, so when Hitman came out, they obviously decided against going with an episodic format for the style of game that they have. But. I think that episodic games are cool if they can stick to a release schedule and if people want to play them, you know, piecemeal they can or if they want to play them all in one go, they can. It's just like TV, right? Yeah. 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 I don't, I think that's an interesting idea, Sam, but I think exclusives in general would keep you around, right? Like I think Microsoft's done a good job of that with Game Pass of like, all right, cool. All first party stuff's going to be there. So it was uh, Sea of Thieves and State of Decay. And then you look out now, right? And you think about Crackdown and Halo and all the different things that will come there. Hopefully that would keep you around, let alone stuff like Below dropping and premiering there. After Charge, the game we're talking about with Andy, right? That's a Game Pass game too. I think it would behoove them to make Xbox Live games with gold and Xbox Game Pass a universal subscription. Yeah. To have like a tier one and a tier two. Like, so if people don't want games with gold that they can get like the, just the basic game pass. But I would like to have a subscription where it includes it all. Yeah. That'd be nice. You think they will? I, you have to imagine that'll be a thing one day. Well, I would hope that they would bundle that with a console, right? Like sure. buy the new Xbox one X, get a year of games with gold, get a year of game pass included in the bundle. Yeah. That to me sounds like a really great marketing idea, Xbox. Jeff Rubenstein, listen. <laughs> Phil Spencer, listen. <laughs> Time to squad up. This is where one of you writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games, giving me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you. Everybody plays games together. Today, Cassidy, a male, needs help on PlayStation 4 PC. Uh, the username, oh, geez, Louise, a Vars. Aver- avarice avarice underscore of underscore man it'll be in the youtube description don't worry about it long time first time and all that happy to be able to kick off my patreon pledge again in the new year thank you very much please feel free to truncate this as needed because it's t- if it's too long andrew did you truncate it or you i did not it? truncate it because i wanted you to be able to read the whole thing perfect i'm just making sure whoa oh no just in case you decided you would like to truncate it one or twins by right um so my squad up is for a little known MMO in Angry Greg slash Jared voice. At least little known to kind of funny when they talk about lasting online services and MMOs. Thanks, Kevin. Just to blame him for something. Final <laughs> Fantasy 14. <laughs> Just joking. Obviously, there's a lot of games out there these days. <laughs> It's an amazingly (laughs) well-supported fantasy MMO with a lot of good qualities for old-school JRPG fans or even new ones. The game has an incredible free demo, allowing you to get to level 30 with any and every class in the game for free if you seem to like it. The community is also almost as good as Kind of Funny as the kind of funny one about taking care of its members. And it's a thriving and extremely well-supported game. I recently fell out of it because of school slash work slash family commitments and other games getting in the way. Hashtag God of War FTW. I'm looking to get back into it, however, and would love to find some best friends, either new or returning, parentheses, or longtime subscribers as well, of course, to play it with me. The game is cross-play with PlayStation 4 and PC, so there is no issues there. Parentheses, if PC owners can take a break from doing their taxes long enough for games and parentheses. Anyone interested can message PSN message me at avarice underscore of underscore man or hit me up in the game under character name Cassidy Harver. Uh, I have a level 50 tank and a level 60 healer and have just about finished all the non DLC content. I'm off Wednesday and Thursday nights and off work around 7 a.m. Central U.S. time. Man, that's a yeah, that's an early call or I guess early end of your day. Uh, currently in the siren server, but more than happy to move to join up with best friends or a kind of funny free company. Yeah, that's what he says. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hope to see some of you soon. And thanks 
for all the good work you guys do. It kind of funny. Sorry again if this went on a bit long. Cassidy. It wasn't too long. I enjoyed that. That was a fun romp of a, a, a squad up. And they just announced the Blue Mage for, Whoa! for Final Fantasy XIV. Wow, mm -hmm. man. If you can rip yourself away from a Minesweeper, maybe you can play that up easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Uh, time for You're Wrong. This is where you write in to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screwed up as we screwed up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and people listening on podcast services around the globe. Again, everybody says I was right. Great. Perfect. That's what I like to see. Um, Hashtag Greg didn't read AC. I did. You can break it out and send it to Barrett, everybody. Sad boy Barrett on Twitter. Um, Kebab says it's worth noting uh, that what makes the Super Dragon Ball Heroes release outside of Japan notable is that it's tied to an incredibly popular arcade card game called Card... Card Ass? Card Ass? Uh, many assume Dragon Ball Heroes would never make it out of Japan because it's so intrinsically tied to the card gameplay. Parentheses, the last game had over 3,300 different cards made for it. It is also the first Dragon Ball Heroes game released on a console rather than a handheld. Thank you very much. Um, I like it's the Oregon Trail theme. If you didn't know, I like I can see what you're highlighting, and laughing. At. I'm like, what is that? It's people being goofballs again. You don't the goofball stuff doesn't get read here. So you're you're you do it. You're 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 dumb. Hmm. Chief Face Roll wants to talk about the epic lawsuits. Less of a you're wrong, more of a they're wrong. And he says less of a you're wrong, KFGD, more of a they're wrong, Carlton. It is likely that Alfonso Riviera, or Ribiera, uh, Ribiero doesn't have a standing to sue Epic. The dance belongs to Carlton rather than the creators who made the character Carlton. See, went versus host. He's got legal precedent here. Even if Ribiero created the dance, it is still likely the property of the show as it would classify as work for hire. Correct. Without ownership rights over the dance, Ribiero has no standing to sue Epic. True, but I still definitely see them settling with him just to shut him up. Just let's not let's not make this into a bigger deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> do you see this one down here from? <laughs> I do. Yeah, Kebab says that he has a, a Mass Effect and Drama trophy trips for trophy tips for me from Power Picks. Oh, but okay. time to platinum 50, 70 hours. Come on, man. That's not gonna happen. That's not how it works. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is kind of funny. Games daily. Remember each and every weekday here. On twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, youtube.com slash kind of funny games, and podcast services around the globe, we run you to the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash kind of funny games. We love you. We appreciate you. We couldn't do any of this without you. Remember, uh, host this week, go like this. Wednesday, it's me and Gary. Thursday, it's Jared and Tim. Friday, it's Andrea and Tim. And on Friday, the embargo will be up for my hands-on time with Metro Exodus. Oh! So if Ooh. you guys have questions about it, um, please write them in on Thursday to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames or check out What's Good Games on Friday. Interesting. We'll do both. But uh, we, are, we are currently drowning in preview events for games. Oh my I'm gosh, sure your inbox so is the same many. way. I'm, I'm going to one this afternoon. Okay, cool. We, before you <laughs> run away and before we do interview, I need to talk to you about what you're going to so I can see what we don't need to send people to. Oh yeah, I ran into things. Fran at the Far Cry New Dawn event yesterday. Fucking we Fran. played co-op together. Oh yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. yeah, talk about that next week. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, <laughs> it's been our pleasure to serve you.